Hey, it's Steve. Welcome to day 14 of this 30 days of video series, and I'm also water fasting at the same time. Uh, quick update on the water fasting, that's still going really well. Today my energy was a little bit lower than yesterday, but uh, still great. Uh, it's, I love this, you know, ability to work like 10, 12 hour days if I want now. Um, today it was maybe like nine hours or so, but still way, way above uh, what I was experiencing the first week. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, I've dropped about 15 pounds so far. Uh, it's pretty typical on a fast uh, to lose about a pound a day if you're a man, maybe like three quarters of a pound a day if you're a woman, but I think that tapers off after a while. I think it's already starting to slow down. Um, so we'll see what happens in the upcoming week. Uh, today's topic that I wanted to share with you is talking about action steps. How to, you know, how to achieve your goals just by focusing on the next actions. Now, there's a whole aspect of goal achievement where you, you know, can break your goals down into projects and plan everything out in detail and schedule things. But I want to start in this video at a more granular level and just work from the bottom up. So instead of thinking about your grand plans, it's possible to achieve many goals just by constantly asking, what's the next action? What's the next step? What do I do now? Um, and I got into this, into this when um, I was uh, in college and I started doing some contract work for a local computer game company. And they wanted me to create a four pack of Windows 3.1 games for them. This was back in 1993. Uh, that I started working on these projects. And I was, you know, I was just a student. I had never written any commercial products before. And I thought, geez, what do I do? You know, I had, I was given like a very rough design document for these games. And I had an artist assigned to me that I could work with. But as far as figuring out the programming, I was the one programmer on it. And I had, I had to figure out all the code myself. Um, so was, these are fairly small projects, like, you know, arcade type of games. Uh, but I was programming on a new platform, Windows 3.1, that I hadn't programmed on before, uh, except in just some like personal projects. So I was pretty inexperienced, and I was thinking, okay, how do I, you know, how do I tackle this project? And since I was doing this as a contractor, I wanted to be able to show some kind of progress to the people I was working for. So I didn't want to just be like spending weeks planning all this out. Um, I wanted to be able to show good, visible, you know, signs of progress as I was going along, so they'd know they'd you know, hired the right person. So I thought, okay, how am I going to do this? And I, and I, what I did is I, I basically just got a spiral notebook and, um, I started, you know, just asking myself, okay, what can I do first? What are the first action steps? And I just listed like four or five things. And then I would go do those action steps and check them off. And then I'd ask, okay, now I've done those, what's next? And I'd list some more action steps, just brainstorming. And sometimes these action steps you know, that I would list would only be maybe 30 minutes of work, sometimes a couple hours of work, but I was working at a very low level, just like trying to figure out what do I do, you know, what do I do now? That's what I was always asking. And I'd make up multiples, multiple lists like this each day and I just work through them. And within like just a fairly short period of time, just a matter of days, I already had a prototype up and running on the screen just because I kept asking what's, what are the next action steps that I should do? And, uh, you know, as you can see, the, the game I wrote, the game pack I wrote was eventually published. This came out in 1994. It was called Fast Action Pack. And uh, it has, you know, little screenshots of the four different Windows 3.1 games. And it was, it was nothing fancy. It was, you know, on a single three and a half inch floppy diskette. Uh, remember these? <laughs> Maybe if you're old enough, you'll, you'll know what these are. And, uh, you know, it, it sold... Uh, well enough that I got uh, over twenty thousand dollars in royalties in addition to the contract pay I was I was getting so um, By the time I graduated college I was able to have some funds to start my own games business Which I went on and then I sank into bankruptcy because I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> on the business side But eventually I made that work um, So that was a learning process a whole, other, a whole other story there that I talked a little bit about in previous videos But this is a this is a process. I still use to this day and I've been using this for, you know, ever since 1993 when I first just started using this method. It wasn't anything I learned from other people. It was just something I came up myself under time pressure to get this process moving forward. Now, I'm not claiming it's super original or anything like that. But, you know, even to this day, I keep these um, spiral notebooks. This is a little one I use. And I just, you know, like here's today's action list. I just make a list of all the action steps. Um, I was working on some conscious growth workshop stuff, testing the... 
um, sign up process. So I just make a list of the action steps. And some this this time, you know, I made a longer list, but these are all fairly simple items. So then I just, just check them off and cross them off as I go. And then, you know, start making another list on the next side and start working those down. And if I don't finish a list, that's fine. I might just continue with the list I didn't finish the next day, or I might just, um, you know, start with a fresh list the next day, like pull out the items I didn't finish and, and make them into, into a new list. Usually I try to do the list in linear order, um, but sometimes I don't know all, the, you know all the ordering steps, and so sometimes I'll jump around a bit as I do it. Again, this is not super complicated, but you know, look how much I've been using this process. Here's like all my work journals um, where I've been doing this, you know, all, making all these action lists, going back to 2000. You know, this is this is just a stack going down to back to 2004. Um, this one starts January 8, 2004. I put a little label on the front of them that says work journal, and I put the dates so I can see which dates each one are. are. So I can even see what I was working on, like in you know. I was still working in my games business in January of 2004, so I can actually see a list of, you know, action steps in here, and um, that's, you know, that's pretty cool. And so I, I can actually, you know, use this as a log, a record of all the different things I've done. And, um, you know, while I have an iPad and, you know, I can do this kind of stuff on the computer, I like this kind of thing for, um, you know, just all kinds of stuff. I, I do, I draw mind maps in here. Um, you know, all kinds of interesting things. So, you know, little just scribbles of mind maps and stuff. This is like in September of 2004. So, you know, who knows? But I, you know, I, I just making all kinds of lists. Sometimes I use this for personal stuff too, but it's, it's a really effective way to just keep in the flow of action and keep moving forward. Um, and I think the real key to making this work is that you separate the decision-making process from the action taking. So you're not stuck take, you know, in, in your action phase, like thinking about what to do next or trying to figure out what to do. You do that separately. First you figure out what needs to be done and then you go do it. And that, that uh, simple division makes a real huge difference because you know, when you're in deciding mode, your brain's just in a different state. You're thinking about, okay, what do I need to do? And you know, you're thinking of the priorities and just like, which steps need to come next. And then, um, you know, now you go into action mode and it's like, okay, I don't need to worry about deciding what to do. I know what to do. Let's just go do it. Let's get it done. You know, and then you can focus on just like working through it as quickly as possible. Another technique I use, which is really cool, is um, I have these little timers that I got on Amazon. I don't know, they're like 10 bucks or something. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a digital timer. And I actually bought two of them because I, I, I sort of like using them in different ways. So let, you know, like maybe I just want to work for an hour, so I'll just type in, you know, 60 minutes or so. Oops, that's six hours, 60 minutes. And then I, you know, just hit the start button and it starts counting down. And then it can be set to either buzz or have an alarm go off at the end of that. So, so uh, you know, I have a tendency to be bad at taking breaks. Um, so I set these alarms to go off to just remind myself to take a break. So it's like I'll work for an hour. Sometimes depending on the work, if it's easy, I might go two or three hours, set a timer. Some people like shorter chunks, like 30 minutes or 60 minutes. It depends on how tedious it is. If you're doing something really tedious and you're procrastinating on a lot, just set a timer for like 10 or 15 minutes and, and bite a little piece off of it, get something done, and then come back and see if you can go, you know, another 15 minutes or go, or go longer than that if you can. Um, or, you know, sometimes I'll just go, okay, I want to limit myself to like working up to a certain time today, or maybe I have some appointments scheduled, and so I'll set one, one timer to go off when my appointment is. Sometimes I use my watch to, you know, set alarms for that sort of thing too. Um, or if I just want to like have a timer like, okay, I sh you know, well, now I'm not eating because I'm on a fast, but if I want to remind myself to have lunch at a certain point, and don't get caught up in all my work so much, then I'll, I may be set one timer for that, and then the other timer is just like timing my current work chunk. Um, and then this is also cool because I can keep looking at the timer and it, it uh, you know, seeing that counting down, it, it, re it gives me a motivation to, to work faster, to just plow through these action steps and get them done quickly. So that's, you know, that's pretty helpful. Um, you know, I don't have much more to add about this, but it's, it's, um, you know, it's possible to, of course, do this kind of stuff on your computer or an iPad or something like that. 
but there's something just really nice about the tactile feel of paper and pen. You know, it's a bit old fashioned, but just being able to, you know, cross off the items as you do them and then just make another list and you can draw pictures or, you know, fill in things anywhere. You know, like technology is great, but I still like this approach best. Even though I'm very comfortable with technology, I can use it. I just don't find it quite as flexible or as usable. Uh, but use whichever tool you like best, because the most important thing is to use the tools that you love. Uh, and, uh, you know, not much more to say about than that. So try this, try this technique if you're stuck in procrastination mode on something. Just write out what are the action steps. Just like write four or five steps. If you know 20 of them all in order, go ahead and write out that many. But sometimes that gets a bit daunting if you're looking at that giant list. So feel free to start small. Just write like three things and then go do them. And then write three or four more things and go do them. And that really starts building momentum and gets a good rhythm going in your, in your days and your workflow. That's it for now. I'll see you tomorrow.